Hey, Tim Curley here with your Friday FAQ. A few words about seller concessions. Actually, just a few thoughts about some things that continue to come up in my business. That means they're coming up in your business as well. So just a few, um, again, some thoughts, a few tips for you on, on uh, the seller concessions. Okay, first of all, you know, we talked about last week how the, the pricing of mortgage-backed securities is kind of wonky right now. There's not a lot of demand for these, and that means some of the programs we're seeing have pretty large upfront costs. And I'm talking particularly about government loans right now. So if you're doing an FHA loan, there might not be a rate available that doesn't have, you know, a discount point and a half up front. So when we talk about seller pay closing costs, be sure you're talking with your lender about that first before you put that figure into the contract, because, I mean, let's think about it. You know, if you've got a 250 loan amount, it's an FHA loan and, you know, uh, it, it has a point and a half up front. That's thirty-seven hundred dollars. You know, maybe your normal closing costs are six or seven thousand dollars. Now you're looking at ten or eleven thousand dollars. So you want to make sure that that's accounted for um, if your buyer needs seller pay closing costs. That's the first thing. The second thing I was going to say is that you know sometimes we have situations where maybe there's a negotiated repair issue or something like that. And what you're trying to do is get some, some money or a credit from the seller over to the buyer to cover that repair issue. And if you haven't already incorporated seller paid closing costs into the contract, that's a good and easy way to do it. It's one of the few ways that you can do that. Just keep in mind, <clears throat> you're limited on seller concessions to, to the program limits. I talk about that in a different video and also you're limited to whatever the actual closing costs and prepaids are. So what that means is like, if you got $12,000 over here that we're trying to get from the seller to the buyer, but the buyer only has $8,000 in closing costs, the buyer can't get that extra $4,000 at closing. It doesn't go to them. It's not a direct dollar for dollar credit. They can only spend what there is to spend on closing costs and prepaid. So in that example, if it wasn't caught early enough, then the seller is going to get to keep $4,000 of that. So again, that's another situation where you want to make sure you're talking that over with your lender and everybody's on the same page, because if you've got excess seller money here, maybe the lender could do something <clears throat> to try to spend some of that money, you know, um, or find out another way to work the numbers out. Okay. <clears throat> Going back to the issue about discount points. I also wanted to bring this up too. Um, there are some situations where like if you're doing a conventional loan, there are rates available without discount points. So many times though, what's happening is our clients go shop rates and where do they go to shop rates? Of course they go online and maybe they find a rate out there. That's a half percent lower than our local, your, your local lenders rates, but they don't look closely and they don't read the very small print that says, yeah, maybe that rate's a half percent lower, but maybe it carries one full discount point up front. Okay, so one discount point, how much is that equal to? Let's say on a $400,000 loan. Well, that's 1%. That would be $4,000. Now, I can tell you I'm advising my clients not to pay discount points. If they can get a rate without discount points, I'm, invi I'm advising them not to pay discount points right now. Well, why is that? Well, every forecast no guarantees, but every forecast that we see right now has rates dropping significantly in the next 12 to 18 months, putting our clients, many of our clients in a position to be able to refinance. And why would you want to pay a bunch of money to up front to buy the rate down for the next 30 years on a loan you're only going to be keeping maybe a year to a year and a half. So I'm trying to have the conversation with my clients not necessarily around rate, but around cost and the lowest rate and the lowest cost option may not be the same thing. So again, that's a situation where they want to talk through that with their lender, trying to help my clients kind of see that. And again, I'm not advising them to load up a bunch of upfront costs if they can avoid it right now. In some cases, um, you know, it's, it's not possible like we talked about with the government loans. Okay. That's all I have for today. One last thing I wanted to mention to you, and you may know this, all these Friday FAQ videos, 
um, are housed out on my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel and I actually started it so I could create a library for you to be able to have access to these videos. If you think, you know, maybe what was that video we talked about where the percentages were back last September or whatever, it's all out there on the YouTube channel. You'll find a playlist out there for real estate agents and all these videos are there so you can find them sorted by topic and everything. So uh, please use that. It's there for you. It's there as a resource. Okay, thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.